So I wanted to just briefly tell you what the, the book is about. Um, it's an anthology, it's called Rigor Immortis. Uh, it's an anthology of uh, about 33, uh, very short, they're flash fiction, so they're short stories uh, that take run with this theme of zombies and love, you know. And each author takes it in wildly different directions. I mean, the settings range from like ancient China to like post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, zombie-dominated future. Um, there's stories set, there's a great story called Head set in revolutionary France. You can <laughs> think about where that might go. Um, and, uh, um, but, but some of the stories are raunchy, some of them are explicitly sexual, some of them are not. Uh, there's actually one very sweet story that maybe if we'll have time we'll, we'll read by another author that's uh, about a young couple um, who are hearing, they're isolated, but they're hearing radio reports of this virus that's spreading, and then the husband realizes that the wife has the virus, you know, and, and how they deal with that. Right, so there's, it goes from sweet, bittersweet, to, to just fun romps. Um, so I'm gonna read my story. My story is uh, called Forbidden Feast at the Armageddon Cafe. Adam hesitated before the shattered door, admiring the bloody handprints. Journeys into the forbidden were like this, crossing a series of thresholds, each one making it harder to return. When Takeshi looked back at him with those brown, bloodshot eyes and flashed that gap-toothed grin, Adam stepped over the shards of safety glass and into the 50s-style diner. Takeshi certainly knew how to treat a boy. The restaurant captured the apocalypse nouveau aesthetic perfectly. Adam admired the axe and shotgun damage and savored the taste of damp smoke. His hips moved to the elongated screams and machine gun beat of Judgment Punk. Opaque plastic canopies stenciled with quarantine hung from the ceiling engulfing each booth. Their waiter unzipped one and the aroma of fresh meat hit Adam and made his knees go weak. Takeshi's eyes never left his as they scooted their way around the vinyl bench. As the waiter zipped them in, Adam tried not to think of Sylvia and her uninspired casseroles. Aperitif. They made nervous small talk until the waiter entered and placed two martini glasses on the table. Adam took one and inhaled a tantalizing human scent. The top layer looked like dishwashing bubbles, but when the froth tickled his lips, he could just taste the essence of brain. Next was a layer of blood, and under that, delicious salty mucus. He drank deep. It was like crunching into the face, into a face, and experiencing the burst of sinus fluid, something he had not experienced since the rise of the Population Control Authority. As dangerous as the apocalypse had been from the morts, he had felt so alive. He watched Takeshi Tung the glass to reach every last drop, his pulse quickened. Salad. Adam thought again of Sylvia and eyed the canopy zipper pole. He could just walk away. He had crossed lines, but not the line that counted. What if she caught them? Takeshi placed his hand on Adam's. They both flinched when the waiter brought the next course. A papaya half held a scoop of what looked like pomegranate seeds. When Takeshi, while Takeshi spoke excitedly of molecular gastronomy, Adam placed one between his front teeth and teased it with the tip of his tongue before breaking the membrane. A tiny burst of iron-rich blood squirted out. The kernel was made of bone and marrow. Such cleverness. They ate the pseudo seeds one at a time, allowing each to linger before letting the human umami fill their mouths and spread warmth into their chests and bellies and groins. Takeshi held Adam's hand, firm but gentle. As his heart beat faster, it was hard to tell where the fear of discovery ended and the anticipation of the next course began. Appetizer. The waiter next brought them a vulva. The cut went from the shaved pubis to the perineum and rested on a be bed of romaine hearts. An erect purple-veined phallus penetrated the crimson flesh. A pleasant musk scent, similar to the fear pheromones exuded by the sapiens, filled the canopy. Adam was not sure how to approach this exotic dish. In the privacy of their booth, they fumbled with their utensils until Takeshi pulled the penis out with his hand. The meat's freshness and the pleasure of dining together made up for the earlier embar embarrassment. Blushing and salivating, they picked up the labia and strode him with their fingers. As he rolled a testicle around in his mouth, Adam realized that he was committed. His choices had a momentum that carried him forward. 
main course. Two Frankenstein-like waiters squeezed in, dragging, dragging a struggling and naked sapien male. They secured the man with cuffs and cables so he was bent over the massive table, chest down and arms spread eagled. His neck was braced to the center. He turned first to Takeshi and then to Adam, eyes wide and pupils dark, wrists bleeding against the manacles. The assistants exited and a chef stepped in and began to describe the specimen. This human was in the prime of life. He was known among his kind as Chuck Bowman and the cook personally selected him for his intelligence and excellent physique. He was the chief financial officer for a sapien company that installed ARFID tracking networks. He trained for triathlons, had attracted a voluptuous fair-haired mate, and had three high-achieving offspring. Adam admired the shine of his salt and pepper hair, as, his, as well as his lean muscles as they struggled against their bonds. Just a few minutes ago, the chef said, in an apartment in the same building, Chuck had been engaged in coitus with his mistress, a nubile sapien female employed by the restaurant. Not only was his brain freshly basted with the endorphins of sexual arousal, but it was also spiced with fear-induced cortisol and adrenaline. The technique had taken years to perfect, but the chef guaranteed the meal would be a singular experience. The cook ripped the tape off the delicacy's mouth. The sapien began to scream in rising pitch. Adam went rigid with excitement. He had to have this, and he had to have it now, and it was all he could do to avoid launching into an indecent frenzy. The cook brought a hammer down on Chuck's head in three precise strikes. The screaming stopped. He pried the skull open to reveal the soft pink-gray treasure beneath and then hastily backed out. Before the booth was even sealed, Adam lunged over the table's edge and he was biting, tearing, slurping, and gulping down pink flesh. Takeshi forced his way in, and they were breathing, moaning, consuming together. Adam felt alive. Dessert. Satiated and drenched in blood, and with Chuck's pleasant aromas flooding the booth, Adam and his lover embraced. He felt the warmth of Takeshi's flesh skin. As Adam stroked his dining partner's black hair and white bits of brain from his square chin, wondered what lines he would cross to feel this way again. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What's on the menu here? Uh, you know, it's mostly vegan. Actually, <laughs> actually I'm I'm vegan. So. <laughs> Not in your mind. <laughs>